And the Holy Spirit actually, the, the Bible says a whole bunch of different things about the Holy Spirit. One of which it says, they call it the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that you might know God better. Uh, Paul prays for the Ephesians and he says, I, I pray that God will give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you might know God better. And that's the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Spirit does is, the Bible also says that it testifies regarding Jesus. Jesus actually said, when, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will lead you into all truth and remind you of everything that I taught. And I don't know about you guys, but the Lord knows I need to be reminded of everything Jesus taught just about all the time, right? Yeah. And, and also with the Holy Spirit, it said, uh, it's called a, the, the Spirit, it says that the Spirit will uh, the convict the world there? of sin, of Can righteousness, and of coming judgment. And, and, and I don't know about the rest of you, but I would be just up a tree without a paddle if I wasn't getting convicted of sin, of righteousness, and of coming judgment all the time, right? And, and it also says that when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, Jesus said when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, that you, you will receive power. And at that moment, you will be witnesses of me to Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And that's really what this is all about. Like, I could preach until I'm blue in the face and you guys could all start going to youth group. <laughs> but that's not going to do anybody any good if we're all hidden. What the whole point of this, what Jesus actually said, it's better for me that I leave because until I go, the counselor or the helper, the Holy Spirit cannot come. So it's better for us to have the Holy Spirit than it is for us to have Jesus Christ in the flesh. Amen. Jesus could be walking with us right now and he would say from his own mouth, it's better for you to have the Holy Spirit. And yet, most Christians would say, well, you know, I'm saved, I have the Holy Spirit. Well, the Bible actually talks about that being a secondary act, that, that you are saved and you have a relationship with the Father through Jesus, but there is a secondary encounter, or secondary even baptism, uh, that's called the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and that's when the Spirit takes possession of your body, and when the Spirit is able to use you and and, and, and trust to you power, and to guide you and direct your steps and convict you, and, and, and trust you with power and authority in the name of Jesus, and that's what it's about. I don't want you guys to leave here just being the same weak, pathetic youth group kids we all got annoyed with in high school. <laughs> we know those kids that are like, they don't talk about Jesus at all until they're about to have a Super Bowl party at their church, and then they're like, hey, come to my church, it's about to be pizza and wings, and people come for pizza and wings, yeah. and the power of the living God could be there, and nobody would think it was a big deal. Yeah. And that's, that's wrong, man. This, we're supposed to see the sick recover. We're supposed to be able to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, and lay hands on the dead and see them come back to life again. We're supposed to be so in tune with God. God, that, that we could be walking down the street and God would say, that guy in a blue shirt, his name is James, he's going to kill himself if you don't preach Jesus to him right now. We're supposed to be, we're supposed to be able to hear the voice of God that clearly and it's not going to happen without the Holy Spirit. And you're not going to, it's not like you're just going to be living your life and suddenly the Holy Spirit is going to come and take possession of your body and start moving you around like a rag doll. You're going to have to put pressure on that. You're going to have to say, God, I'm not sufficient enough to do this on my own. I'm not confident enough. I don't have the power. I'm not, I'm not eloquent enough. In fact, Paul said to the Corinthians, he said, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquent words of man's wisdom, but I came with a display of the spirit and power that your faith may not rest on man's wisdom, but on God's power. That's significant because a lot of wise men can persuade people to do a lot of different things, some good and some bad. But the only people that will be able to, to, to cause people to rest their faith in God's power are people that are able to display the spirit and power. And that's what it's about. And so, listen, I don't know, I don't know how many of you really know God. And I mean, you may have like been, you may have heard a song at a Christian camp one time and started to cry and thought that was God and that's not God. You may have, have heard a sermon one time and thought it was really good and answered an altar call and somebody prayed a prayer with you and told you that you were all set. That's not, that's not it. That doesn't mean you know God. That means you prayed a prayer got caught up in a moment. The knowledge of God is something that can only come as a consequence of having fully surrendered your everything to the, the, to the Spirit of God. And you can only be qualified to be a possession of the Spirit of God if you've come through Jesus. If you've given everything to Jesus, you don't have the right to listen to whatever music you want. You don't have a right to wear whatever clothes you want. You don't have a right to watch whatever movies you want. You don't have a right to go wherever you want, or, or say whatever you want, or think whatever you want. I'm sorry. I know that people, everybody told you that if you start calling yourself a Christian and change your Facebook status, say Christian dash other or whatever, right? <laughs> that, that you would be cool, right? Or if you say this prayer, you'll be cool. Or if you take this Bible, you're going to be all right. Read this tract. 
you're going to be cool. If you start going to church, you're going to be all right. As long as you don't drink and have sex outside of marriage and try not to cuss, you're going to be all right. And that's not it. There are going to be many people that stand at the throne of judgment on that day. And they say, I went to, to church every Sunday that morning and Wednesday night. I never told anybody that I wasn't a Christian. I didn't have sex until I was married. That was a good kid. Everybody thought I had it together. And Jesus is going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. The highest calling any person has is to know God and to be known by God. And secondary to that is to bring other people to know God and be known by God. That's your entire purpose on earth. You have no higher calling. There is no higher purpose for a human. And you are disqualified to do it unless the Spirit of God has possession of your body. Listen, Paul, Paul actually says, Do you not know your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? And the word that he uses for temple is actually the same Hebrew word that they use for a thing called the Holy of Holies. That's the inner sanctuary of the tabernacle. That's actually where the, the power and the raw, unleashed presence of God dwelt. It was so powerful, in fact, that if you approached it out of order, you would die. That there were people that, that, that came near it without a right heart or without right standing with God, and they died on the spot. That's the kind of incredible power that dwells inside of people that are, are possessions of the Holy Spirit. And that's what I long for for you. I could talk about this all night. That's what I long for for you guys. So listen, I just... How many, how many of you, you guys may not all know what I'm talking about or whatever, but even if you do know what I'm talking about or if you don't know what I'm talking about, how many of you have, have never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Are you willing to raise your hands? Two, three, three of you have you never received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Behind you. Behind you. Turn around. Oh, hey, okay, all right. Sick, good. Here, you guys gather in the middle. Uh, you want to hear something wild? The apostles actually received the baptism of the Holy Spirit four times in the book of Acts. Uh, it's not a one-time event. It's not like, oh, yeah, man, it happened one time in church, and then I left, you know? But I happened one time in church, and now I'm set for the rest of my life. So if I know for a fact that there are people here that came to the show out of curiosity and that are standing on this corner out of curiosity that need a fresh touch from God, that something significant happened in a moment in your life, and that was good enough to carry you for a couple months, maybe a couple years. But where you stand right now is nowhere near where you used to stand. The way you burn right now is nowhere near the way you used to burn. And if that's you, would you be bold enough to raise your hand? Come on, if you need a fresh touch from God, I want you to gather in around these guys. Here, y'all come, you come close to me. If you need a fresh touch from God. Oh, hallelujah. Listen to me, this is not a one-time event. I don't want you to live the next 10 years of your life talking about what happened tonight. I want you to live the next 10 years of your life talking about what Jesus is doing that day. You need to understand that every moment God is speaking, whether you're listening or not, and the qualifier for you as to whether you're going to be a position to speak the word of God, whether you're going to be a generation that prophesies to the nations and, and sees the sick healed and, and, and the broken uh, restored, is going to be whether or not you're willing to listen in every moment, to turn your attention and your affections away from worthless, worldly things. So listen, Fred, you can come up here and pray all you want. You can raise your hand and be honest about it all you want. You can talk about this moment all you want. But it's going to be what you do with every moment after this. Every moment from this point on. It's going to be what you do with that that, that, that decides whether or not you're qualified to be a part of this movement. So listen, I'm just going to pray for everybody here that needs to be touched by God, whether it's the first time, whether it's the hundredth time. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, you're here. You are here, creator, father, lover, mighty warrior, wise ruler, king, commander of glory, the mighty one that sits on the throne, the beginning and the end. Oh, hallelujah. God, you are here. You are mighty. You are supreme. We love you, God. Thank you that you are here, Lord. God, we just repent as a family for the fact that we've ignored your presence for years. That you've been near to us, God. Your word says that the whole earth is full of your glory and we've missed it. We've been distracted by the, 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 the latest Hollywood flick. We've been distracted by the latest trend or the latest band's album. We've been distracted by boyfriends and girlfriends and worthless garbage, God. Your glory has been filling the earth for as long as we've been on it and we've missed it, God. 
Awaken our senses, Father. Awaken our senses again, God. Sharpen our senses to be able to see you, God. Open our ears to be able to hear you, God. We just re receive the blood of Jesus for the remission of sins over everybody here, God. I declare that your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus. It is finished. It is finished. Your sin is removed from you as far as the east is from the west. It is done. Sin has no dominion over you any longer. I declare over you a fresh baptism of the Holy Ghost and fire right now to be released. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. The Holy, Spirit. Holy Ghost, I declare that you will take full possession of every soul here. You will take full possession of every mind here. Holy Spirit, you take full possession of every body here. We are insufficient in and of ourselves. But with you, we are more than conquerors. Oh. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. You are the king on the throne. The only one that deserves authority in our life. So we give it all to you. Oh, God, we just rejoice that prodigals have come home tonight. We rejoice that wandering, backslidden Christians have come home tonight. They're going to stop playing church now. They're going to stop playing church now. They're going to stop playing church now. I baptize them with boldness in the name of Yeshua the King. I baptize them with boldness, God, that they would confront sin and not simply run from it. Oh, hallelujah. I declare that they will confront sin and not simply run from it, God. Oh, I just declare that. The Prince of Peace so reigns over every life so here. The Prince of Peace reigns in every, every life goes, here. Right king, you are the King. Them. Jesus, you are the you King here. To love them. Every they heart longs for you, Jesus. To. Every life here was you, designed God, and sent you, into the earth so that we would be able to so satisfy they, they the longings so of thirsty hearts. Can. And every thirsty heart they longs for you, Jesus. So they can praise you we just commit God. ourselves Everyone to proclaiming world, you, Jesus, our Savior, our, children, our King, our Master, we our friend, our lover, children. our everything, Nobody Jesus. Knows. We commit no, ourselves to proclaiming you everywhere we go. We, may we never steal a word away from you. May we never take control of our own lives back, even for a moment, God. We do not have right to anything because you paid the price for all of it. We declare that you are the Lord. You are the Prince of Peace. You are the Everlasting Father. You're the Mighty God. Oh, hallelujah. You're the Wonderful Counselor. And we just submit ourselves to your direction and your rule. Holy Spirit, take possession of everybody here. Bring times of refreshing. We give it all to you, Jesus. You're the King of all kings and the Lord of all lords. And we worship and adore you with everything we have. In your name, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen, y'all. I have a... We have people all the time tell us, you know, man, we, we love what you guys do, and we wish that we could do what, what you do. And someday I'm going to do what you do. Um, listen, it's our job to play to play in a band. And we just refuse to go to work without preaching Jesus. And uh, some of you guys may work at Jimmy John's, and I challenge you to, to not go to work without preaching Jesus. Some of you guys are in high school. I challenge you to not go do your job as a student without preaching Jesus. Some of you got bad groceries at Walmart, and I challenge you, don't go to work without preaching Jesus. It's what you were made for, and you may not know everything. You may not know a million Bible verses. You may not have it all figured out, but what you know is this. Jesus is the King, and He loves you, and He wants a relationship with you. Amen. And that alone can change lives. Amen. That alone will change lives. If you're willing to say, He saved me from myself, and He'll do the same for you. That will change Amen. lives Amen. forever. Amen. Amen. So listen, I just I bless you all with confidence, with a radical willingness to confront sin in your own life and in the lives of your friends and to preach the kingdom of God and establish it no matter what the cost. Amen. Lay your lives down in every moment of every day and let your light shine before men. Don't ever be afraid. Don't ever be embarrassed. Don't ever be ashamed because Jesus loved you more than anyone could ever love you. Pay the biggest yeah. price for it. That's right. I love you guys. I love you guys. Y'all can just hang out, pray for each other, fellowship, just testify to each other, tell each other what has happened in your life. If there are people that have, have rededicated their lives to Christ, if you guys were far from Him and you came back to Him tonight, you need to grab somebody, man. Grab a friend, uh, even grab one of us and just you know, tell us what God did in your life. Um, you know, just ask for prayer. If, if any of you need prayer, uh, we're going to be around for a few minutes just praying for people. If anybody's sick or, or broken or there's something 
I just feel that somebody here has, has cancer, and I just I, I challenge you to come and ask for prayer uh, because I, I know for a fact that God heals. He can heal, and He, he wants to heal, and He will heal. Amen. So, um, listen, I, I bless you. You guys are incredible. I love you so much. That's dismissed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs>